Perfect for the Mafia. This is the 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning. Not only is it an all-electric version of the F-150, currently it's the quickest and most significant Ford in recent memory. We've lived with it over the past two weeks, we've tested it, we've towed with it, we've measured it, and in this video we're going to go over all of our results in excruciating detail. So come on and join us. When you look at the wave of incoming all-electric pickup trucks, the Rivian R1T, the Chevy Silverado EV, the GMC Hummer EV, and the Tesla Cybertruck, you see that each one makes a big statement. They all look wild, different, and unique. And that's what makes the F-150 Lightning stand out. It doesn't look like it was designed to be in some kind of dystopian sci-fi movie. It just looks like a normal truck. There's no standout look at me features about its design. Again, it's just a regular F-150 with a little bit of difference. It's to the point that I think if you were to swap this truck out with the owner of a regular gasoline powered F-150, all they would do is notice that their truck suddenly got a lot more quiet and a lot more powerful. And I mean, a lot more powerful, ready? It's just, it's so fast. During testing, we recorded 60 miles an hour in four seconds and a quarter mile in 12.7 seconds. That's fast for an F-150. In fact, it's faster than the F-150 Raptor. And it's about what we'd expect from a Ford Mustang Mach 1 with a manual transmission. Versus other quick pickup trucks, it's slightly off the pace of a Ram TRX and nearly a second slower than a Rivian R1T. And that remains the quickest truck we've ever tested. That's the acceleration from a stop, but what happens when you're already rolling? Well, the distance closes dramatically. We measure roll-on acceleration from 30 to 50 miles an hour and 50 to 70 miles an hour to simulate what happens in the real world. And in those tests, the Lightning essentially ties the Rivian. So it may be slower in a drag race, but in the real world, the acceleration is as quick as it gets. And it's hilarious when you stab the go pedal from any speed under 50, the front tires spin. <laughs> Trust me, any good old boy is one stab on the go pedal away from becoming a true believer in this thing. We wish the braking performance was as impressive. Our braking test for all vehicles is five back-to-back -back stops down a one and a half mile straightaway, and then a six stop at the end coming back the other way, allowing for some cool down time. And this shows you how much the braking system can handle the stress from all those stops. We recorded a 180 foot stop from 70 miles an hour, and that's good for a pickup. Trucks used to be like in the 200 foot range. But the problem was on the following stops. In fact, on the third stop, we got heavy brake fade and lots of odor. Uh, the stability control light actually came on in the dash and there was an alert that told us that the brakes were overheating. On following stops, the distances increased, of course, and it got to the point where this truck was actually unable to hold ABS. To be clear, this is an extreme test, but we do every vehicle this way, and even pickups don't fade like this. Plus, the experience might shake your confidence for towing up to the Lightning's maximum of 10,000 pounds. That result stands out a little further when you compare it to what we got out of the Rivian R1T that we tested late last year. This truck, despite being significantly larger than the R1T, weighs 300 pounds less. And yet the Rivian R1T was able to stop at 177 feet from 70 miles an hour, and that was on all-terrain tires. Plus, it didn't experience the amount of fade that we experienced with this truck. The Lightning starts at roughly $42,000 after destination, but before incentives and rebates. That gets you a 98 kilowatt hour battery and a rating of 230 miles of range. 
The extended range 131 kilowatt hour battery offers 320 miles of claimed range, but you have to step up to the next trim level to get it. Not only does the battery cost $10,000, it also requires 9,500 bucks worth of additional equipment. So to get the most range, you're looking at spending roughly $74,000 minimum, and that's to get a cloth interior XLT. That's a lot of money. Now, this Platinum costs upwards of 90 grand, in fact, a little over 90 as we have it equipped, and its additional weight from its larger diameter wheels and extra features mean its range is 300 miles. How do those claims stack up in the real world? We test range by driving at a constant 75 miles an hour because we believe highway driving, highway long distance driving specifically, is where EV range matters most. Now, because of that, our test results, our real world range results, are gonna be lower than the EPA rating because the EPA rating is an average between city and highway driving. You really gotta take both figures into account. Also, you need to remember where you drive and how you drive. If you live in a congested area and spend a lot of time at low speeds, you're generally gonna see better range than we get in the Midwest where our freeways move at like 80 miles an hour at the low end. In our range test, we recorded 230 miles, and that's about 77% less than the EPA rating. For context, we usually expect about 80% difference between the EPA rating and our real world result. But let's move into the theoretical area. If you apply our observed difference to the 230 mile battery, you get 177 miles of freeway range. That's fine for many folks commute, especially if you live in a congested area or a city, but that's also a low place to start if you spend a lot of time on a freeway or plan on loading this truck with serious payload or a trailer. Which brings us to towing. The Lightning is rated up to 10,000 pounds with the max trailer tow package, though this Platinum has a max rating of 8,500 pounds. Overall though, it can't tow for very long. We loaded it up with a 5,100 pound trailer and observed mileage at 70 miles an hour on flat freeway. This thing has the power and control to handle a trailer no problem, but the range is a challenge. With this setup, our truck averaged one mile per kilowatt hour. So you can expect highway range with a trailer of decent size and mass somewhere around 140 miles, but realistically, it's less because you aren't driving to zero miles of range and you aren't leaving a fast charger at 100% of the charge. You wouldn't want to cover more than 80 miles between DC fast charger fill-ups because of how fast charging throttles you near a full battery. And then you need to consider how few, if any, charging stations are built to accommodate trucks towing trailers. And all this is before you factor in driving up grades or into headwinds. Overall, this short range means that towing with an EV is something that isn't quite there yet. We also measured the charge rate. The extended range battery comes with a more powerful onboard charger, 19.2 kilowatt versus the standard battery's 11.3 kilowatt, that's for level two charging. Ford says the Lightning has a 150 kilowatt max DC charge rate, but we actually saw 164 kilowatts indicated peak. In fact, the Lightning averaged at or above 150 kilowatt while it was charging from 10% to 38%. Like with many other EVs, the charge rate of this truck dropped off when it reached 80% full, but it didn't fall off nearly as bad as it did with the Mustang Mach-E, so that's good. Our average charge rate was 106 kilowatt, which is okay. It's better than the Rivian R1Ts that we tested, even though that truck had a higher peak rate, and it's certainly way better than the Mustang Mach-E's 47 kilowatt average. Now, because you can think of EVs as big batteries that also happen to drive, with that mindset, you realize that you can use these to charge other things, and the Lightning can do just that. In fact, it can charge other EVs, including itself. It actually says it'll charge itself by 645. <laughs> I don't know how it'll do that, because that's not how physics works. Unlimited power! 
This four-door cab is very spacious, it's easy to see out of, and it's very, very quiet. We recorded 65 decibels at 70 miles an hour, and that's, again, really quiet. It's significantly better than what we recorded out of the last F-150 Limited we tested, the gas-powered one. It's also lower than what we got out of the Rivian R1T. That was 67 decibels, but that difference could be because the Rivian R1T was on all-terrain tires. Overall, what you gotta know is that this is a very quiet truck. As for the rest of the interior, it's just as nice and functional as that of the regular gas or diesel powered F-150. Actually, it's just gas powered now. Never mind. As for the rest of the interior, it's as nice, functional, and spacious as the standard internal combustion engine F-150s out there. Um, everything is about the same with the exception of, of course, this display, which is borrowed from Maki -E and looks quite nice. For the money, which is again above $90,000, we think the Rams interior is a bit nicer with regard to materials and design. And more than a few of us have complained about this shifter, and that takes a bit of explanation. It does this neat thing where it can fold flat, and that means you can fold this table out and have a flat workspace here. That's nice. What isn't nice is because of that mechanism that it allows it to fold flat, it means the act of shifting it between gears, it just feels cheap and plasticky and kind of dainty. It's, in fact, it reminded me of what it used to feel like to shift your power wheels in gear as a kid. If the shifter was up here on the column, you could still feel like you were operating a truck shifter, but this is just not a great solution for something that you interact with every single time you drive the truck. Overall, the Rivian R1T feels a little more special at, again, this $90,000 price range. So if you want the best bang for your buck out of a Lightning, a less expensive trim level is probably the better pick. But the big party piece of the F-150 Lightning is this front trunk or frunk. Now, there's no engine here, obviously, but that means you get a ton of space up here and power for accessories right here. So if, even if you wanna escape from the world, but still bring your video games with you, you can, and a TV or two as well. Now, this space was big enough to fit three of our standard size carry-ons that we use to measure in all vehicles. The space of it, kind of the shape was it, of it, was limiting it from holding more, but we were also able to fit things like a baby stroller and our standard issue golf bag without the driver. Overall, that means a ton of space in the front of this F-150 Lightning, and there's more in this storage, this under tray storage, and that actually slides in place too, so you can use it as a partition. We use hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ping pong balls to measure cubbies like this. It's tedious work that I'm thankful I don't do, but I'm thankful that our team does it. And this space fits 719 ping pong balls. That's the same amount of space that you get in the center console of a Ram 1500 for context. Now, this space is great for holding their charging cables or whatnot, first aid, uh, you know, toy dinosaurs, NES cartridges, ping pong balls, you know, small portable fans, pencils. Hey kids, let's look underneath the F-150 Lightning. So of course there's a lot different because this is an EV version of a traditionally gas powered truck. And you can see that immediately by looking right here because this is the electric motor. You can see how it's driving through rear wheels. There's another one of these units at the very front that powers the front wheels. So we have two electric motors. Now ahead of that in this black box right here, this is actually the rear of the battery pack. But what I want to point out here is the independent rear suspension. Most F-150s have a solid rear axle and leaf springs, so these wheels are just connected to each other. Uh, but this is an independent rear suspension. You can see the lower control, or the control arms here, shocks, springs, and so on. All this is to point out that the ride and quality in this truck is pretty nice. In fact, actually, let me back up. On a normal road and normal freeway, you may not notice a difference in ride quality or a big difference between this and a standard F-150. It really becomes apparent when you hit things like a speed bump or a pothole or something. That's when you notice the additional sense of control because that impact happens and then it stops. There's no additional shutting, shuttering or juttering. It feels really, really nice in those situations specifically. And it's all because of this stuff right here. The Ford F-150 Lightning is a very, very nice truck that I happen to like quite a lot. And what's interesting is it seems to be built generally for the way people actually use trucks, not what they imagine they might do. And that relates specifically to towing. If you plan on towing a lot with this truck, you're probably going to be disappointed by the range you get and the state of our charging infrastructure in 
2022. Also, the price of the long range battery, specifically all the additional costs that are associated with it, is pretty unfortunate to be blunt. Now that all aside, this is a really nice EV. It's comfortable, it's powerful, it's quiet, and it, all the space, all the practicality you get with it means it could and probably should be your family's primary vehicle. And all that together makes this a very, very compelling truck.